Hello and welcome to the Intuit Developers YouTube channel. I'm Lucy Shen, a developer advocate here at Intuit, and I'm here today with Pooja Shah, who is one of our wonderful full stack developers here at Intuit as well. Pooja is actually here with us for Global Accessibility Awareness Day, um, and I'll let her introduce herself and explain why. Hi, I'm Pooja Shah, and I'm working as a full stack developer in Intuit on QuickBooks Builder. I'm here in Tim with an person here in Blockchain Book Year. Since I'm here in Tim I normally report. So in digital world, more like if I listen to movies or I watch some videos or audios, I actually have to read on closed captioning so that I can know what is being talked about because the person's face is not always visible. Awesome. Thank you, Pooja, for your introduction and for sharing with us a bit of your experience. Um, I'm also curious, as a developer who has a disability, um, what do you primarily code in and is it influenced at all by the disability? Does it change the tooling that you use? So I'm a full stack developer. So basically, I work on React, TypeScript, GraphQL, and Java languages. And the way I call is like if I had to call with anyone on Zoom call, what I primarily do is like a uh, program because sometimes I may not understand what the other person is saying. So what I normally ask them like if they want to share some ideas with me or if it is kind of uh, programming, I ask them to share their screen and write a small snippet. So it becomes easy for me to understand what they are talking about and all of those things. Before we started all working on Zoom, for example, and you were able to enable closed captioning, ask for screen sharing, what kinds of barriers did you run into and how did you get over that in terms of making sure that you were able to understand each other? In terms of screen uh, sharing, what other barriers I've, I had is that sometimes the other person are uh, afraid to turn on the camera. So, what I would have to do is turn on the closed caption or maybe request the other person if they can turn on the camera. And what I have seen is that sometimes Zoom closed caption doesn't always work. So the other way I go for is I open Google Slides. And when I go to an empty Google Slides in presentation mode, it has a closed caption available. Um, that is much more accurate in Zoom something. And what if you're meeting in person? Do you usually like, does reading lips help, for example? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I just read it only lip. I'm curious then, like, before we started all working on Zoom, right, and you had the closed captioning feature, and we were all working in person and you had to read lips, uh, right. is it easier for you to use Zoom closed captioning or do you prefer the in person experience? Yeah, actually, find it easy with Zoom. Closed caption, so I don't have to open another window with another captions and about it. Zoom is all everything integrated in one experience. So it has become very easy for me to rely on closed caption. Awesome. I'm glad it's been um, an easier experience. It's an interesting silver lining, I think, in the entire pandemic story <laughs> that uh, the accessibility tooling provided through like workplace tools like Zoom has actually made it easier for, for you from an accessibility standpoint. I have never considered that. Yeah. Um, so then uh, along those lines, right, um, it's the Zoom developers that gave us these kinds of accessibility features that have been really game changing. And so what kinds of yeah. advice would you give to developers when it comes to being accessible um, or providing accessible features for the users when developing for products? First of all, what I think is we should keep in mind of how people who anticipate how they work on day to day life with it. Basically, developers should actually get their product thoroughly. Think in customer shoes who anticipate and they should ask this question to themselves. Is their product accessible for everyone? For example, if you are designing a web page or developing a web page, you keep your mouse aside and use only clipboard. So when you use only clipboard, the developer should actually use tab or any other buttons and then that's 
but that they are able to navigate around the web page. If they are not able to, that means it is not accessible, so that they can go back and fix it. What would you say are the top accessibility, because it's it's different with different disabilities, there are different accommodations. Um, what are the, the big obvious ones that you wish every developer would check for? What would you put on that checklist? I would focus only on web accessibility because I'm a full stack developer, so I know more about more than the top web, web accessibility. My tips are like, whenever you have an email on a web page, we should always have an alt text for our email. Because if you consider people who have low vision or who are blind and they need to navigate on a web page, uh, the emails should we convert them into a sound. We convert uh, emails in form of sound and explain people what the email is talking about and what is the purpose of the email. And the second one is like, we should, whenever you have a link on a web page, it should have a descriptive text. So what happens is that the users who navigate to the link know what is the purpose of it. And it will also help them the user where the link will take them to when, when you navigate from pages to pages. And the third one is the most important thing is we should always use accessibility validation tools to uncover bugs on our web page. For example, in Chrome, what we have is accessibility in search for the web. And it will give all of the bugs that we save my, our web page is not accessible if the, it is accessible or not. So there are like audit tools and checklists that have automated a lot of these things for yes. us. Um, we just have to actually use them. <laughs> That's the key probably. Uh, is there anything else you would like to add uh, at this point before we wrap up? The most important uh, thing I would tell you can develop this is always make your product accessible because accessibility is important for everyone. Thank you so much, Pooja, for taking the time to talk to us for Global Accessibility Awareness Day. Um, we'll put some resources in the description of this video if you are a developer or yourself someone who needs um, accessibility tooling. Um, hopefully those will be helpful to you. And again, I want to echo the sentiment of this video again, which is that accessibility is about making your products available to everybody and accessible to everyone, no matter what their disabilities or abilities may be. So hopefully that is a lesson that we can all take to heart. And uh, hopefully we'll see we'll see everyone else around developing more accessible tooling for everyone to use. So thank you for watching our video. See you next time.